Hi everybody, it's Michael here with part one of my review of the E3D version 5 all-metal hot end for RepRap printers. In part one, I'm mainly going to be talking about my impressions of the design and the construction and also the experience of building the E3D version 5. And in the next part, I'll have it installed in my Maker Farm Prusa i3 and let you know what I think of how it prints. First off, I just want to say I really do like how this went together. I do like the way this is designed. Uh, as you can see, it is a fairly standard design for a hot end. It does have this really nice uh, machined aluminum heat sink right here. It does have a uh, built-in fan mount that has an always-on active cooling fan, so you're going to get a lot of cooling through there. Uh, very nice heat block. It's heated by a uh, cartridge heater, which I think is a very superior way to go over the old style uh, heating resistor. This is just held in with one grub screw, so it goes in just in a matter of a couple of seconds. We've got a uh, 0.4 millimeter nozzle, so that's going to be our resolution with this hot end as well. We have a, uh, the kit does come with uh, everything you see here. It does have a, uh, a thermistor that is either number one or number eight, depending on your version of Marlin. Mine, it turned out to be thermistor number one on the table. One thing that did strike me, because this is an all-metal hot end, and of course the advantage of an all-metal hot end is that you can heat it up quite a bit further than you can uh, a standard hot end for RepRap printers. This one, I'm told, has been tested up to about 400 degrees Celsius, which is way hotter, I think, than the print temperature of just about any material that's out there. But it's good to know that you can get that hot and you're certainly not going to melt anything. Uh, that does lead to a couple of different things in the construction of the hot end that I wasn't quite used to that uh, did, you know, did take me a second to kind of get adjusted to. Number one is the way this thermistor fits in. Uh, normally, every other hot end that I've ever built, you have a standard set of wires and you use some uh, Teflon or PTFE sleeving to insulate the uh, legs of the thermistor. You go right up to the glass bead to make sure that it's not touching anything else that's metal and shorting out or anything. In this one you can't do that. Why? Well, very simply because the operating temperature of this hot end could very much uh, exceed the melting point of any kind of Teflon, which I think is about 250 degrees or so. That's typically the temperature limit on most non-all-metal hot ends. So everything around here has to be able to handle the higher temperature. Uh, for that reason, you can't use Teflon to insulate it, so what you have to use is Kapton tape. Now, I always, I admit, I've had kind of a love-hate relationship with Kapton. It's absolutely the right tool for the job when it's what you need, but I don't really enjoy it. I don't get excited that I get to go work with Kapton today, so that's, but that's just me. In this case, clearly that's uh, the right material to be using for the job. Now, this does come with a little sheet of uh, Kapton. It's probably about oh, two inches by about four inches or so, and that just seemed like, I, that made me nervous that having that little there uh, to do all this insulating, so I just got out my handy roll of Kapton. This is a little bit thinner, and if you've been doing RepRap for any amount of time, I'm sure you have one of these laying around too, and if you don't, you should go out and get one, because this is a very handy tool to have in your RepRap toolbox. So I wrapped up the legs of the thermistor with the Kapton, and then used the Kapton supplied with the kit as sort of an outer sheath, and to kind of give a little bit of shape. Also, this... Um, this wire right here is not the standard typical wire that we would expect. And again, because this is a very high temperature hot end, this is, uh, I want to say this is some sort of impregnated cloth insulation. And I actually found it a little bit more difficult than usual. My wire strippers didn't quite work on it quite as well. So I had to go back to old school using a uh, hobby knife and fingernails to strip the ends of the insulation off. Now again, right in here, now I normally like to solder joints because I think that's a very good solid way to both mechanically and electrically isolate a joint. But again, because this is so hot, you could conceivably melt the solder. So there's a couple of crimping ferrules that are used in there. Uh, just a couple things that I found to be a little bit different about the build, but no big deal. The last thing about the build that I was a little bit, I'll admit, I was a little intimidated by, I found it a little bit daunting. Uh, the last step uh, of the construction is to hook this up to your electronics or your printer and go ahead and fire it up and heat it up to 300 degrees Celsius to do the final tightening of the nozzle right here into the heater block. And that made me a little bit nervous thinking about heating up something that hot while it was not installed in the printer. Uh, of course it turned out to be a non-event. I was able to just hold on to it with a mounting plate and then uh, put an adjustable wrench around the outside of the heat block and then a, uh, I want to say it was a seven millimeter wrench to just tighten that just a little bit and it was no big deal. So it shouldn't be a big deal for you either. That's a good time to segue on to uh, a couple other things I want to say about E3D. Number one, they've got some absolutely outstanding uh, instructions online that show how to build this. And if you've ever built a hot end before, there's nothing there that's really out of the ordinary and probably something you've seen before if you've ever assembled, you know, even just a J-head. 
But it is nice to have the pictures there and to uh, to have the discussion from the manufacturer about things like how to do that last tightening step, which is which is pretty cool. So props to E3D for having some really good online documentation. One other thing about the construction that's going to lead into another point about E3D here shortly. When I went to go uh, check the mount, I got I took out my old reliable uh, hotends.com mount, which is intend originally intended for J-head, but it works really well with the Alu hot end as well as with uh, the Prusa nozzle. And uh, I went to go put the E3D into this and noticed that it just was quite a bit loose, that uh, there's there's just way more room there, and that's this is really this particular mount just wouldn't work. I did notice, however, that the distance right there looked a lot like the J-head that originally came with my Maker Farm Prusa i3. It looked like it might be pretty close to the same uh, same spacing there. So when I went back and got the the old um, laser cut quarter inch birch plywood mounting plate that came with the Prusa, and that turned out to be just a little bit too thick. This is, I think, nominally about six millimeters or so, whatever a quarter inch translate to, six plus a little bit of change. In any case, just a little bit too big. But what do we do as wrap wrappers when we discover that there's some part that we need? Where do we go? We go to Thingiverse. And in this case, uh, this mount right here was designed by Badger Force. Thank you, Badger Force, for creating the perfectly fitting printable E3D um, version 5 hot end mount. So that problem was solved. Now in finding the solution to that problem there's something else that I think is is worth saying about E3D. Uh, the first thing I did was did a Google search just to say you know what kind of mount is used on this hot end and the solution that I found the first uh, first hit that came up on Google was actually a post that somebody had made on the Ultimaker forum and I noticed number one that was a company or a machine specific website or forum rather, and I did also notice that someone from E3D actually answered their question quickly and correctly, and I thought very in a very friendly manner, uh, right there on that site, which I thought was pretty cool, that E3D is not just doing what a lot of other manufacturers might do, which is saying, well, you know, we have our IRC channel, we have our forum set up, we have our FAQ, we have all that. They're actually out there looking on the forums to see who's using their product and what kinds of uh, troubles or what kinds of questions they may have, and they're being very proactive about that. So hats off to those guys for that, too. So that right there is uh, pretty much what I have to say for now about the process of building and, uh, and, and mounting the, uh, the E3D version 5. I am very excited now to see how this prints. So I'm going to go inside, mount this up on my i3, and the next video will be my impressions of uh, early prints. So thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.